Welcome to Build Your Maverick Business, the podcast for underdog, outlier, and renegade entrepreneurs. Brought to you by Strange Creative Studio. If you dream of going off on your own and launching your rebel empire, but don't know where to start, you're in the right place. We'll teach you how to use mindset, branding, and practical advice to build a killer business and transform your world. And now, here's your host, founder of Strange, Alex Pitt. Welcome back, everyone. Guess what? I built the Duvo Fort. I'm in the Duvo Fort. And while I think I've learned that it's not completely necessary that I build the Duvo Fort... It makes me feel like my inner child is coming forth into my work. And even though I am nearly six foot tall and I have a lot of limb to contend with and I don't really fit inside the duvet fort, sod it. I'm having a lovely time and I'm sure that this is going to help me bring my best energy to this episode, which is a big one. I mentioned last week we were going to cover this because it's something that has affected me so much throughout my career, not just in running my own business, but when I was working full time, when I was freelancing, this has always shit me up on varying levels, varying intensities. And that motherfucker of a thing is imposter syndrome. Now, chances are you've come across this term before, but it's something that I've really struggled with. And I've only in the last sort of year or so, I think, managed to find practical ways to to beat it and to kind of not completely get rid of it. I mean, I have heard it said that if you don't have some level of imposter syndrome, then you're probably a sociopath. So, you know, (laughs) we want to keep ourselves on the straight and narrow. So if you haven't come across imposter syndrome before, I mean, where have you been? I feel like everyone on the Internet is talking about it at the moment. Which is great news because, you know, the more you know about these kind of things, the more you can deal with them. But imposter syndrome, it's this idea that you're about to be caught out, that you're not qualified to do the thing that you're doing, that you somehow conned your way into success. And any minute now, someone is going to find out and call you on it and you are going to be exposed as this fraud. Now, for me, I've always compared it to this idea of feeling like you're on the run from the law like any fucking minute someone's gonna jump out from behind a bush and be like ah you don't fucking know anything about branding and I'll be like oh yeah okay take me away take my take my limited company away (laughs) I don't have a right to be here but like I say this is something that's affected me for such a long time And it was a big deal even before I started my business, even before I went off on my own. The first time that I really became aware of it, I was in my mid-twenties and I'd worked at the same company for years. And I realised it was time for a change and sort of looked around for some new jobs. And eventually I got a new role at a company who was paying a lot better than my previous role. So I had this pay rise of about £11,000 a year which when you compare one salary to another and the age that I was, I mean, I was only young. It was such a fucking big deal. Like that was a life changing amount of money to me. Now I have all sorts of issues around money mindset as well, which is another podcast episode. We'll get into that another day. But the fact that it was such a big jump in salary absolutely sent me loopy. And I just had this like, oh, fuck, I can't do this. I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm going to get in there and everyone's going to realise that I'm useless. Like All of these thoughts were just going on in my mind constantly. And I got to this new job and everyone was very lovely. And I worked there a week, constantly waiting for somebody to realise how shit I was at everything. And then in my second week, I made myself so ill that I had to go to A&E halfway through a Monday morning. And it was one of the most humiliating things that's ever happened to me. It set off about a year and a half's worth of health issues. Like, this is how bad this can get. Because the stress that I caused myself in thinking that I was a fraud, I'm about to be caught out, any minute now, someone's going to jump out from behind that fucking bush. (laughs) and say you don't know what you're talking about it's 
honestly, every time Strange send out an email, every time we put out a blog post, every time I guest speak on a webinar, I'm just expecting someone to email me and say, you don't know what you're fucking talking about. And it's like, come on now. How many years am I going to have to do this? How many years am I going to have to run a branding agency? How many client testimonials am I going to have, which are absolutely glowing and love the work that we do, before I accept that maybe, just maybe, I do actually know what I'm talking about? If you're anything like me and you've contended with imposter syndrome, if you're still trying to work out how to navigate this fucking little mind gremlin, then I have found a few techniques that have worked for me and I'm going to share them with you this week. Hopefully they come in useful. Hopefully they will help you to deal with your own imposter syndrome. If there's any others that you want to add to the list, drop us an email. Let me know. I would happily top up in next week's podcast so that we can get sharing some ideas because this is a bitch. This is such a pain in the ass thing that happens. Mindset is so important when it comes to building your business. And this little motherfucker of a thing can be really crippling if you don't get a bit of a grip on it. So I'm going to share with you my absolute top tips of how I've learned to deal with this. Now, the first one is one of the best pieces of advice that I've been given in ages. Very wise woman that I know, very lovely lady. I told her about my imposter syndrome, told her that I've got this, you know, this horrible negative self-talk going on. You don't know what you're doing. I, I, I will never be anything. I ain't shit. She said to me, if you have that negative self-talk going on in your mind, give it a name, give it a face and give it a silly voice and tell it to shut the fuck up. Now, as soon as she said that, the first thing that came to my mind was I'm going to call him Colin. <laughs> I'm, I am so fucking sorry to anyone who's listened to this podcast who's called Colin. Please don't at me. I'm really sorry, Collins of the world. Let me tell you why, though. So when I was a little girl, very small, I was getting tucked into bed one night by my dad. And Daddy Pitt is an absolute legend. He's a hero. He's very. He's where I get a lot of my, <laughs> let's say, quirks from. And I said to my dad, uh, you're not allowed to leave because there's a monster in the room. And dad was very, very sweet about it. He went and checked under the bed. He checked in the wardrobe, checked behind the curtains. He said, there is no monster. And I was like, nope, nope, you're not allowed to leave. There's a monster. And he was like, look, okay, you've got to get to bed. But if the monster comes back, just pretend his name is Colin. Because nothing called Colin can ever be scary. <laughs> I mean, what a fucking wonderful way to view the world, right? So I was just like, oh, okay, cool. There's, there may or may not be a monster in my room, but if he's called Colin, I can't fucking be scared of him. So when it came to this idea of giving my negative self-talk a voice, I was like, I'm going to call him Colin. Now, I photoshopped him into existence. He looks like a kind of pasty, hideous jab of the heart wearing a pink cowboy hat. The pink cowboy hat was just, just for a laugh. But... I have this picture. I keep it on my phone in the favorites folder of my phone. And now whenever I have this horrible negative self-talk in my head, if you don't know what you're talking about, you're kidding yourself. You're never going to be a success. And you're about to be caught out for not knowing what you're doing. I just say, shut the fuck up, Colin. Shut up, you little bastard. And you know what? I give him a silly voice as well. He kind of talks like that. So you actually can't fucking take this guy seriously. So whenever I feel freaked out, whenever I think, oh my God, I have no idea what I'm doing. I remind myself that that's not me talking. It's just Colin. And Colin's a little bitch and Colin can shut up. The next thing that's really helped me, really, really made a difference to how I approach my imposter syndrome is to remind myself that I'm an expert to someone. One of the things that really triggers my imposter syndrome is comparing myself to other people, right? Now, that's the super common thing. We all do it. We can't help it. It's human nature. But what I would tend to do is compare myself to people who had more experience than me, who seemed to be doing so well in their field, who were so incredibly impressive, who had more followers than me. You know, brand strategists who have got 10,000 followers on Instagram or whatever on LinkedIn and just looked really super impressive. What I really should have been doing was realizing that for every one of those people who I was looking to and comparing myself to, who was absolutely fucking smashing it in my eyes, there was like 10,000 people who do not know the first thing about what I do. They don't really get branding. They don't get graphic design and they don't want to have to try and work it the fuck out. 
<laughs> in the same way I hire an accountant to do my taxes because I don't want to work that shit out. They just want someone who understands all of this stuff better than they do and can help them. Now, I will look at a client, I will look at a person who's coming onto a workshop with me or onto a webinar, and I will think, can I help you? If I can, excellent. If I can't help them, then they're not the right fit for me. And that's it. That doesn't mean that anything's gone wrong. It doesn't mean that I'm not good enough. It doesn't mean that I'm not qualified enough. Nothing has gone wrong. It just means that that person is not the right fit. That's all. It means absolutely nothing about me as a person, my skill set, anything. And that's quite a liberating feeling. That's quite a relief when you think about it like that. It shouldn't be about I have to be the best at everything or I have to be the most qualified. I have to beat everyone. It's just who in front of me can I help? That's all. Now, this third one actually came out when I was having a conversation with some of my oldest friends. We've got this group chat of maybe nine of us, nine girls. We've known each other for years and years and years. Absolutely love them all to pieces. And I can't remember how this came about, but we were all chatting in our WhatsApp group one day. One of them said, do you know what? I'm starting to think that success is so much less to do with your skill set and your knowledge base and everything that we take for granted, like talent, for example, is so much less to do with that and so much more to do with how confidently you can talk absolute bullshit to a group of people. And all of us absolutely like pissed ourselves like, yes, <laughs> it's so fucking true. And, you know, we're all, we're all successful women. We've all got careers that we're really proud of. We all work in different industries. But all of us found that to be true. That success is so much less to do with your talent and so much more to do with how much you can bullshit people. And it was really quite a depressing thought. <laughs> Please do not get me wrong. I'm not going to sit here and say to you that you should be going out there and bullshitting people. The point of what I'm saying is that you can't let your voice get lost in the noise. I heard this mantra a few years ago, which has absolutely stuck with me ever since I heard it. And it is this, there are people out there with half your talent making waves while you're still waiting to feel ready. So what if, just humour me for a second, what if you did just go out, start that business, do that talk, launch that thing that you've been thinking about that you're too scared to do because you think that you're some kind of fraud? What if you just did that and let yourself fake it until you believe it? Now, fake it until you believe it is a fantastic (laughs) saying that I heard from a very, very successful business owner friend of mine. And it is really around just letting yourself play the game a little bit. Don't be cruel to yourself. Don't think that you don't have as much to say as anybody else, because there are a lot of bullshitters out there. And the chances are that you've got a lot of things to say, but you're terrified that someone's going to call you out and say, no, you don't know what you're talking about. If you fake it until you believe it, Step up, picture this version of yourself that is the ideal, you know, you in five, 10, 20 years time as this successful business owner, show up as them every day, even if you feel like you're bullshitting, the chances are you're really fucking not, you're making a lot of sense, (laughs) you're bringing a lot of value to people and there will come this point where the scales tip, where all of a sudden you realise that you're not playing a part you are bringing that value, you are helping people, and you have built something that's really worthwhile. There was no bullshitting, there is no snake oil salesman around here. But by just letting yourself believe it, fake it until you can get to that point where you truly believe it yourself. And you'll realise that everyone believed you all along. You were the only one who wasn't going along for the ride. Everyone suffers from some level of imposter syndrome. I truly believe that if you don't, then you are probably a sociopath. So don't be mad at yourself if you have these thoughts. Don't be mad at yourself if you feel like you're holding yourself back. Just try and acknowledge it and don't let it beat you. So read up on imposter syndrome. Let me know if you have any more tips other than the ones that I've shared today. Go forth and prosper, my loves. And I'll see you next week. building a maverick business of your own don't leave your branding to chance we have a range of strategy and design packages to kickstart your killer brand and help you find your raving fan base 
Book a free discovery call with Alex today at strangecreativestudio.com.